I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my... Whoops! Hey! Happy Sunday, kids! I forgot we were on! Hey! We're still talking about heroes! Do you know one of the greatest things that heroes do? After all the bad things are over and the battles are done, peace is found once more! Did you know the Bible says in Matthew 5, 9, Blessed are the peacemakers! For they shall be called the children of God. Real heroes are people who bring peace back to this world. They do all they can do to live for God, even in the bad times. Even when the tough battles they are fighting, they're fighting for peace, fighting for God to come back to this world. God blesses those who try to live for Him, for those who fight for real peace. God loves those who bring peace to this world. Those are the greatest heroes of all. Let's see what Brother Caleb has for us today about these things called Biblical Heroes. Hey kids, Brother Caleb here. I am so thankful this morning that you have joined me once more for Kids Church Online. Kids, I hope you have your Bibles with you. I hope you found a good place to sit and you're ready for today's lesson. Now, we're talking about heroes of faith, and we've already talked about two. We've talked about Abel, the righteous, the hero of righteousness, who found and had respect of God. Then we talked last week about Enoch. Enoch, the hero of dedication. It takes great dedication to be a child of God, to do great things for God. And that's what Enoch was found. He lived 365 years. And then the Bible said he walked with God and then he was not. That means he was picked up, he was transported from earth to heaven without ever having to meet death. Wow. He found the favor of the Lord because of his dedication to the Lord. Wow, that is amazing to me, kids. God is so good to us. He loves us so very much and he rewards us for our faithfulness. It doesn't always happen the same way to everybody. But God rewards us for our faithfulness. And kids, that's what I hope you, you have found in the Lord. I hope you found a way to be faithful to Jesus this morning. We're going to be talking about several other heroes. But today I'm excited about today's lesson. I am so excited about it. And I cannot wait to teach it to you. But first, before we get started, we're going to get started with prayer. Because you know what? Prayer is very important. This is one of the ways we can show God our faithfulness to Him. is through prayer. And so this morning, kids, let's pray and ask God to bless us and to help us and to learn from his precious book this morning. All right, kids, bow your heads. Our most precious and heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for your blessing towards us, Lord. We do not deserve all the good things you give us. And Lord, we live in a day that's uncertain. There are terrible things that happen out in this world. And Lord, we don't understand why they happen, why they're allowed to happen, but Lord, that doesn't matter. We don't have to understand. You see, God, you, we understand today. We, we put our trust in you to take care of us, even though sometimes things go wrong. We believe, God, that you're going to take care of us and see us through. Thank you for Jesus, for dying on that cross, for saving my, my soul from a devil's hell. And Lord, I know I don't have to spend an eternity there now. I get to live with you in heaven. Forgive me, Lord, when I fail you. Because you see, I know that, under, that, that, that sin makes us have a bad relationship. And Lord, I don't want that. And I'm sure these kids who are watching, Lord, they don't want that either. They want a good relationship with you this morning. So Lord, I ask God you bless and forgive us of our sins towards you. Help us to be better. Help us to be righteous as Abel, to be dedicated like Enoch. And, it, and Lord, from the character we learn from today, Lord, may we apply that lesson to our lives as well. Grow us, mold us in your image. And we ask these many things in your most precious and holy name. And everybody said, Amen.
Very good, kids. Thank you for joining with me in prayer. Now, let's go ahead and dive into today's lesson. I'm going to go ahead and read our theme verse for this series that we've been going through. In Hebrews 11, remember, I said it was the faith chapter. It's been nicknamed the faith chapter. And it has a huge list of heroes that God dedicated this chapter to. God dedicated, God created the Bible. God wrote the Bible. You see, so we, he, he made a special section and he started listing names of people who were found faithful in his eyes. And so we have that list to go by. But he started out this chapter with this verse. Follow along. It says in Hebrews 11, chapter, uh, chapter 11, verse 1, the Bible says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Remember I said faith is a lot like the air. We, we can't see the air. It's invisible to our eyes. But we can go outside and we can see the wind. We can see the air push the trees. We can see a leaf or something flowing down on the, on the ground because of, of the wind or the air pushing it. Now we can't see the air, but it, we know it's a substance. We know that it's real. And it's not seen, of course, but there is evidence of things around us that we can find and we can see and we can know that it is there and it is real. That's the same thing as God. We cannot see God. Oh, I wish we could. I wish we could talk to God verbally like I, you can hear my voice. But we can't. That's why God gave us prayer so we could talk to Him that way. That's why we put our faith in God. We can't see Him, but we know that He is real. And I hope you know that God is real this morning, kids. If you don't, we can get that settled. We can show you the way how to find Jesus Christ as your personal Savior after this lesson. But kids, oh my goodness, how great, how great God is to us. And God is the, probably the, no, there's no probably about it. God is the greatest example of how we are supposed to live. He is the greatest hero of our time. But today we're going to be talking about a new, another character, not, not just the Lord Jesus, but we're going to be talking about another character that's listed in our heroes of faith. Now, I want to say this this morning. Now, heroes have been around for a very long time. People look up to pe other people who have done heroic things. The world makes movies about heroes. The world writes and tells stories about superheroes or heroes of this world. And everybody, whether you admit it or not, everybody has somebody in their lives that they look to and they, they kind of look to them like they're a hero to their lives. They admire who they are and what they have done and kind of maybe wish they could be like them. Now, that's not a bad thing, and that's not necessarily a wrong thing, kids. But I will say this, that there are some heroes in our life that we put in the place, in the position of hero, that should never be placed there. Because sometimes heroes can be turned into idols. And I know, kids, you know what an idol is. An idol is what people bow to and worship. An idol is a bad thing. An idol is a god, a god of this world. You can make several kind of idols. You can have an idol in your car. You can make an idol out of money. You can make idols out of anything. And that's why it's very important that we don't take people and put them in the place of heroes because they have that tendency to become an idol. This is why we, as the children of God, we need to look to the right kind of heroes, the kind that will direct our paths in the way of God and to God's people. That's why, kids, I'm trying to encourage you to learn your Bible, find these heroes of the faith, and make your example like their example, to follow their teaching, to follow their paths. Because, you see, they, they did good things, and they've, some of these people have done bad things. Even the bad stuff that they did in the Bible, we can, we can learn from. See their mistakes and learn from their mistakes and say, hey, I won't do that for my life for God. It's very important, kids, that we make the right kind of heroes 
because the right kind of heroes are the ones that bring us closer to God. Now, today's lesson. We're going to start and we're going to uh, find our verse in Hebrews 11, verse number 7. We'll find our third hero of the faith. Now, this verse says this, By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen yet. Noah, who built the ark? Noah, Noah. See, he didn't know the flood was coming. God said, he, but, but the word of God says that, God was being, uh, that Noah was being warned of God, of things not seen yet. Moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness, which is by faith. Noah, the man that was prepared for the wrath of God. Now, I know most of you probably know the story of Noah, but I'm going to retell it today because I want y'all to get this. You see, Noah was a great man of God. In the days of Noah, God was looking down. He was looking on the earth, and there was many people on this earth at that time, and God was looking down for a righteous man. God only found one. One man that he found faithful and righteous in his eyes. And his name was Noah. He looked down and he was angry, God was. He saw sin everywhere he looked. Everywhere he, could, everywhere he looked, there was sin, something happening that was not of God. And he was looking for that one person, one person he could use to, to do a great thing so God could fix and reset this world to a place of holiness and righteousness. And there was only one man who feared God, and that was Noah. You know, it's a good thing to live in the fear of the Lord, not fear of this world. It's okay to be in the fear of the Lord, though, because, you see, God is all-powerful. God can do anything and everything He wants to. He created all things so He can do anything He wants. So God is all-powerful. As I just said a minute ago, the weakness of God, the weakness of God is stronger than man. God created all things. He can destroy all things if he wanted to. So I need to live in that kind of fear that God can do those things. But he doesn't want to do those things. No. He wants to, he wants to be a blessing. He wants to help us. He wants to lead and guide us. But we need to be like Noah and live in the fear of God, knowing that he can do those things if he so wishes. So when God came down to Noah and he commanded him to build this great big ark, a great big ship or boat, if you will, for a, the great flood was coming, a flood that was going to be destroying the entire world that we live on today. Can you imagine? It's still hard for me to imagine, kids, that once upon a time in our world's history, this whole world, the land you and that you're standing or sitting on today, has been flooded once before by an entire ocean, a flood of water just constantly all over the world. The highest mountain was even covered underwater. Can you imagine that? How crazy a thought that is. But God did that. So he prepared Noah. He said, look, a flood is coming. I'm not going to tell you the day nor the hour. But you must prepare today for that time whenever I will flood the earth. So Noah got to working. He started that day building the greatest and biggest boat the world had ever seen at their time. Now Noah was able to get his sons involved. His sons started following Noah, and they started helping him build the boat. Noah was able to... Uh, sons' wives got on board with this. They started helping where they could. But the rest of the world would be found mocking the people around Noah. They'd be mocking Noah. Every time Noah would pick up a hammer, they, he would start hammering at, away at this boat, and the people would come and call him Crazy Noah. Crazy Noah. Calling his family crazy. Calling him crazy. And the people of Noah's day would not lift one finger, would not lift one finger to help Noah build this gigantic boat. Every day as Noah was building Noah would shout to the people. He would shout to the people, Get right. 
Help me build. A flood is coming. God will destroy the earth. You've got to get right. Get right. He was preaching every day. Get saved. I can help you. I can lead you to the Lord. Come and help me build this boat. Have faith. And the people would just continue to mock him. They would continue to drink things they shouldn't drink, smoke things they shouldn't smoke, doing drugs, whatever they were doing, fighting. This world was a horrible place that Noah was in. And Noah kept preaching day in and day out, the end is near, the end is near, the end is near. And nobody would listen to him. And they just kept living for the devil. Noah kept living peaceable. It's hard to live, kids, sometimes as a Christian in this day. A lot of people don't like Christians. They think we're crazy. And one day God will send His Son Jesus back to this earth to get, gather His children. We will all go back to heaven. But until that day, we are to live peaceful like Noah, telling every day the end is near. Jesus is going to return. That's the gospel. That's the good news that the Bible tells us to teach. Where it says, go ye into all the world and teach and preach about the, the Father and about the Son and about the Holy Ghost. We're talk, the Bible teaches us to do those things. And that's what Noah was found doing here, teaching and preaching. The end is near. The end is near. And yet nobody would listen to him. But that's okay. If people don't even listen to you, kids, that's okay about that. It's, not, it's their choice. But it is also our choice to continue to live peaceful in the eyes of God, doing what's right, telling people about it, if they don't get saved, they don't get saved. But we as Christians who believe have to continue to live right for God, no matter what. No matter what the world may say, we have to continue to build on our arcs because one day the Savior is going to come. He's going to send another, he's going to send a spiritual flood to this world and he's going to destroy it. On the final day of Noah's accomplishment on building this great massive boat, this great ark. God started sending the animals of the world towards it. There's a huge door on this boat and it let down and, uh, and God started sending the animals two by two, one male, one female of the same species. Every animal on the earth at that time went on that boat. That way, whenever the floods were gone, that the world would be repopulated with these animals. That's what they were there for. But so that God sent Noah to build this ark to save these animals. And when the final animal was on that boat, God himself reaches down and shuts the door. Not Noah, no other man, no animals. God shuts the door on that boat. When God shut the door, Noah's family was in, Noah and his wife was in there, Noah's three sons and their wives were on the boat, and then the rains began to come, little by little. One drop, two drop, and then a big rain just started to come all over the world. And the people around them, they were like, oh, this is nice, we haven't had a rain in a long time, but then they realized it's not stopping. The rain is not stopping. And it just kept going. Day one, it would rain. Day two, day three, day four, day five. And it just started, kept raining, kept raining. But listen, kids, it didn't just rain where they were living. No, this entire world got flooded. That means every, this, this world's in a circle. That means every part of the circle of the earth, rain was falling down continuing to, to raise the water level to a, to a place of filling up the entire world to the tallest mountain on this planet. Noah and his family were kept inside. They started hearing, Let us in, Noah! Banging on the, they were banging the people outside. They were banging on the ship. Let us in. We believe. God is coming. We believe. When God shuts the door on something, kids, it is finished. Noah, no matter how much he wanted to, 
He could not let those people in. He couldn't. All things on this earth died. The people, the animals, the whole world was nothing but water. And this really broke the heart of Noah. I believe it even broke the heart of God a little bit. The reason why I say that is because God looked down on this earth, kids, and he couldn't find not he he could only find one man, one man who was living right. Out of all the people of the world, he found only one man who was living for him. And this broke the heart of God. This is why God had to do what he did. Noah was found faithful to God because. And because of that, God spared him and his family in the waters. After 40 days and 40 nights, the waters started to go back down. Little by little, day in, day out, day in, day out, the waters would start trickling down. And finally enough land came to be where the, where the boat landed on, on some ground. And God once more reaches down, and he opened the door of the boat. And the animals started coming off two by two, going their own places and ways and repopulating the world. And Noah, the man of God, the man of faith, he gets out himself, him and his children, and they build an altar unto the Lord to give him thanks for the safety and God placed a rainbow, a seven-colored rainbow in the sky. The rainbow has taken many meanings in today's world. But the rainbow first and will always be for us Christians a symbol of God's promise. You see, you see kids, the rainbow that we have symbolizes... God's promise to us that He will never, ever flood this world again. He will never destroy the world by the ways of a flood again. That was God's promise. That was His stamp of approval saying, It is finished and it won't ever happen again. And He gave that rainbow to Noah and to the world to know that promise forever. Now we have taken that promise and we have corrupted it in today's world, but that's what it means, kids. It means a promise, okay? And peace once more was brought back to this world. Because of the faith that Noah and his family had in the Lord, peace was given back and was found again once more on this earth. Noah wasn't a perfect man. No, he wasn't. He was just as much a sinner as I am. He was just as much a sinner as you are. He was a human being. He made mistakes. But Noah was, a, was a wanting to be used of God. He was wanted to be used of God and live for God. And God found him on this earth and he saw that Noah could be used, wanted to be used. So he used Noah to physically build an ark so that once again peace could be brought back to this earth. And Noah and his family, they helped repopulate the world. God used him once more for peace to be brought back to this world. And we can be used of God if we're found faithful as Noah was. Did you know that, kids? We can be used of God to help bring that same peace back to this world if we would only live faithful to him. Let me ask you that. Could God use you like Noah? Could God use you like Noah? That's a good question to ask yourself this morning. Praise God for peace. Praise the Lord for peace. Peace is so needed in our world today. We all need to, to do that. Live peacefully with God. Noah is a great hero of the Bible, and there are many more for us to learn about. Noah is a great man of God. And kids, I hope that you will... I hope, kids, that you will... Listen to these heroes and make some of these people your heroes to live by, to learn from, and to want to be like. Because God did great and mighty things through these men and women that we're going to be talking about. 
So kids, I hope you have a wonderful week. Let's first end with prayer, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for this day you've given us. And Lord, we need your blessings and forgiveness. Help us, O oh Lord, to be more for you than we have been before. Lord, help us to be like Noah. Noah was just a simple man. And Lord, he was asked to do a great thing for you. You asked him to build a great ark, and he did. And Lord, he, you, you asked him to tell people about you, and he did that. Even though the world did not heed his warning, Lord, he still tried his best to serve you. And Lord, we ask God that you help us to be like him, to be, be keepers of peace, be peacemakers, Lord. We need to be that, Lord, so that you can get the glory of all things. Forgive us when we're not. Forgive us when we fail you and sin against you, Lord. And now, Lord, I ask God that you bless these kids this week. Give them a good week, Lord. Protect them, Lord, from all harm. I know they're going to be starting school soon. And, Lord, may these teachings that they've been receiving on these lessons, Lord, be uh, taken and applied to their lives. Help them to be a Christian when they go back to school, to hold their testimony high. And, Lord, protect that testimony. Let them, let them show the world that they are Christian and that they love you, Lord. Help them to be the heroes of the faith of this generation. And, Lord, we ask God these things in your most precious and holy name, Lord. Amen. Kids, I love you. God loves you this morning. I hope you have a wonderful week. Pray for one another. Pray to God that you will find these heroes to your liking, that you may apply their, their stories to your life. These are great heroes, guys, and I hope that you find one and you make one of them your heroes. How about making God first your hero, though? He'd be the best one to make your hero of today. All right, kids, you have a wonderful week. I'm praying for you. If you need anything, please let us know. You have a wonderful week, kids. Bye-bye.